What is up guys? Welcome back to another Flight Sim 2020 video. In today's episode, we're going to find out if the A320 and FS2020 will successfully perform an Autoland approach. So, for those that aren't familiar, an Autoland or an ILS Cat 3 is a type of approach that sometimes is necessary when the visibility is so poor that we cannot see anything out of the window. So a lot of times you're familiar to having a minimums and if you're ready to get to minimums, you'll please see the runway and then you can continue the approach. A Cat 3, depending on the category, fail operational, fail passive, or Cat 3C, depending on how you want to word it, there is a type of approach that does not require any visual reference to the runway. That is what we call an auto land. So we're going to set the airplane up for an auto land. We're actually going to see if it will successfully shoot the approach and land by itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here set up in the box. So you can see we're on the flight plan to Los Angeles runway 25 left. I can see the ILS is auto-tuned 109.9 and my final approach course will be 263 degrees. That looks good operating normally. The environmentals or the perf approach page here needs to be filled out. Make sure you have your Q&H, temperature, wind, everything set in the box here as it should be depending on your conditions outside. For some reason, when I put 299 or 2 here in the Q&H, it just defaults to 30. So I think that's a little bit of a bug. One thing that's different from the real aircraft here as well is that in the real airplane, if you're doing a Cat 3 auto land, you will put no in the DH box depending on the aircraft software. This will auto populate the minimums window to actually show no DH which you can see right here, no DH is already shown and activated. As we get closer to shoot this approach here, let's just go ahead and manage the speed, start slowing down, and I'll go ahead and arm the approach push button. Now also in the real aircraft, you would press AP2, that way you have autopilot one and two. You need to have both autopilots engaged for an auto land approach. Unfortunately, that's mo not modeled here. If I select autopilot two, it just changes over to autopilot two. So in the real aircraft, you would actually have both autopilots engaged. You can see here glide slope blue. That means that it is armed and ready to capture my glide slope right here. My localizer has already captured. You can see my localizer signal coming in from the right hand side. The aircraft is in a slight left turn. So as of right now, we are set up to do an auto land in FS2020, not necessarily representative of the real aircraft, but some of it is there. So we still have a proper glide slope. You can see our glide slope is now intercepted. It is boxed on the FMA. That's an uh, FMA change. And we're below VFE next. Let's go ahead and extend flaps one. And we'll keep on coming down. So with no DH selected or no minimums in the box, you're looking for a couple different things to happen here on your FMA. You want to make sure that the land green comes up here on your FMA column, making sure that the aircraft is receiving the proper signal and is fitted to continue the approach. If you do not get a land green in real life, that is an automatic termination of the auto land procedure and a go around would ensue. After we get the land green FMA enunciation, we are also looking for a flare. Flare is a very important enunciation in the FMA. That is going to settle or arrest the descent rate of the aircraft on the glide slope down to the runway. Want to make sure you see that flare mode kick in there. If you do not see flare mode, it is also a mandatory go around depending on your company procedures and how you want to set it up. But if you do not see a flare mode here, you're probably going to hit the runway even in the event of a manual go around. So it can just be a hairy situation. But we'll go ahead and see what happens here in the Flight Sim 2020 Airbus. This is as close to the real thing as I can get it set up here within the limitations of the sim. We also want to make sure our auto brakes are selected here since we're not going to be seeing any stuff outside of the window. So I'll have my auto brakes set to low and we'll go ahead and we'll just stay with flaps two right here until we get a little bit lower. One thing that I've always taught in the Airbus is the stabilized approach criteria. To be stable, if you're 180 knots or slower with flaps in configuration two, which they are, at 2,000 feet above the touchdown zone, above the touchdown zone, not necessarily your MSL altitude, but 2,000 feet above the touchdown zone, you are in a position to be stable for the approach. It is at that point, at 2,000 feet, that you lower the landing gear and continue deploying your flaps to position full to be stable by 1,000 feet above touchdown zone. Now on a Cat 3 auto land approach, there is no harm, there is no shame in configuring a little bit early just to make sure you are staying ahead of the aircraft. In real life shooting a Cat 3 auto land with no visibility, being ahead of the airplane is a huge part in maintaining a good situational awareness. So right here I'm about 600 feet above my 2,000 feet uh, window, so I'm going to just go ahead and drop the gear now and can going to continue to configure. We're going to go flaps 3. And I just want to get the airplane configured early because we are doing a zero visibility approach. Now we may see something out the window here, but I'm going to try not to cheat. I want to have a little visibility out there so you can kind of see what's happening 
even though you can do this without visibility at all. We'll go flaps full now. And this is at the time when we would start our landing checklist here. Make sure our cabin crew has been advised. Auto thrust is in speed mode. ECAM memo. We should have a landing memo here below 2,000 feet. I don't think it's modeled in this Airbus. Landing all green, indicating that the systems are all in line for a landing to take place. All right, so we're getting ready to pass our final approach fix here of Lima intersection on the 2-5 left approach. We seem to be on our course and on our glide slope. No DH selected. Let's go ahead and see where we end up. Depending on your company procedures too, you may turn your landing lights off if you are at nighttime and there's clouds and it's very low visibility. Sometimes having the lights on will actually hinder your ability to see the runway or runway lights, runway environment. So in this case, I'll go ahead and leave them on. It's not a big deal, but that is something maybe you're flying at nighttime and you want to make it a little bit easier to see the runway. You can go ahead and turn your landing lights off. That is an authorized procedure for doing a CAT 3. All right, here we come approaching a thousand feet. little bit of wing rock there everything is still looking good at this point in real life you're definitely watching your systems like a hawk here making sure everything is where it's supposed to be because doing an auto land if something goes wrong and you're very close to the ground there's not a lot of room for air we're through a thousand feet now so 750 feet RA, we should see a land green here pop up on the FMA. Let's see how if it's modeled or not. So not seeing the land green. So in real life, we would probably be executing a go around at this point. For testing purposes, we're going to continue the approach. Eight knot wind almost off the nose there within limitations. Four. So we can start to see the runway here, but we're going to pretend that we don't see it because I want to show you guys what the airplane will do. It is flying the approach down, a little bit of wind there, a little bit of turbulence, we're still okay. Two. So there's our land green. That's good. 100. Now we should get a flare mode. 60, 50, 40, There's our flare mode. The airplane is not flaring. Retard. I will retard the throttle. And we're down. Autopilot disconnect, which wouldn't happen in real life. So now I have control of the aircraft. Select reverse thrust. And let the aircraft slow down. And there's our rollout. So in real life here, the autopilot would still be engaged. And if you attempted to turn off of the runway without disconnecting the autopilot, there's a possibility that you will snap back to the center line and, and the airplane will try to recapture that localizer signal. But it appears that the autopilot will automatically disconnect upon touchdown here on Flight Sim 2020. But nevertheless, it did successfully complete the auto land. I didn't do anything there. The airplane touched down by itself and flew the approach by itself pretty interesting to see. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you guys here on another one very soon. See ya!